Hi again, everybody. Just a simple diagram now for reverse lights and how to trace schematics. This is a different type of schematic. I believe I did one time this part. Now I'm going to go over this part. Now, going starting from the top, and usually you pick a point. Let's say if you have a problem with the reverse lights not working, okay? You have two alternatives. First of all, how do you know your reverse lights are not working? Well, the car in back of you told you, hey, you know what? You don't have your reverse lights on. Or you could take your car, park it next to another car in back of you, and look at the, if they light by the reflection onto the other car. Or you could put your parking brake on, put the ignition switch in on, make sure to put the parking brake on, and then check the lights, come out of the car, and check the lights. Now, Anyway, we established we have no reverse lights. The usual thing is for people to say, oh, backup lamp, lamp switch is the problem. The switch is the problem or the fuse. Now, before we do all this, we have to understand and try and understand the schematic and how it works. First of all, current flows and we have to be hot in run position. That means that we have to be in the run position. Now, one thing you will not notice here you, not, you do not see the ignition switch in this schematic. Even though we know we have to be hot in the run position. We have to put the key in the run position. So that's a thing that's left out of this diagram. However, we always start from here, from the fuse. So this is a 15 amp fuse. So current flows from the battery... Through this, through one side of the fuse, comes out the other side of the fuse, if the fuse is good. So therefore, we have 12 volts here. We should have 12 volts over here because we didn't lose any voltage drop. Now, I wanted to point out a couple of things about this different diagram. And as we do it, you'll understand yourself. This goes through a wire, a purple-orange wire. So the current flows here, over here. Now we have two choices. Are we in manual transmission or are we in automatic transmission? If we are in automatic transmission, we follow this line. If we are in manual transmission, we follow this line. And we both come out here. And for automatic transmission, you will come out here. So therefore, current flows here. Since I did this one in the previous video, I'm going to do this one now. So... Current flows here, as we said, right? This is a connector, C156. Again, same colored wire. And usually, if it's purple or orange, the second one is usually the one that's the striped one. So this orange would be the striped one, usually. So purple orange over here to the connector goes through this. Again, same type of colored wire. Purple orange, current flows here. How much voltage should we have here? How much voltage should we have here? We're going through a wire, a straight wire. We should not lose any voltage because the resistance is very small. So if we have 12 volts coming out of the fuse, we should still have 12 volts going into this connector. We should still have 12 volts going into this backup lamp switch. Now, for a circuit to be complete, the switch has to be closed. So this position that it's showing you is when it's normally open. When we activate it, by changing the gear shift to reverse, then we are activating also the switch. And it closes it, and it'll be in this position. So now current can flow because it's complete. This wire now is connected to this wire when this is closed. That's what we need to complete the circuit. So current can now flow here, as we said. Now in the reverse position, current flows here, comes out... Um, uh, maybe black and pink, I'm not sure. I colored over it. Black and pink here, same wire. Black and pink. And the numbers that just di dictate the circuit uh, trace. If you look in the book for the circuit, you would look under 140. That's where the circuit would be. So that's not really relevant to us. That's why I'm not really pointing that out that much. Current flows here, goes here, same colored wire. Again, through a connector. Again, now, if you notice, and many, many schematics are like this, 
especially on um, those Haynes manuals and all those, you have a, a choice depending on the make and model of your car. If you have a Ranger, Ford Ranger, you're going in this way. If you're going in, the, you have your Bronco, Ford Bronco, you're going this way. So if you have a Chevy, let's say you have a, a, a Chevy Trailblazer, you go this way. If you would have some other Chevy vehicle, uh, Silverado, let's say, you would go this way. Whatever it says here, this is the one that you're dealing with. Came out in the current flows here. Now, how much should it be over here? 12 volts. 12 volts. Why should this be 12 volts? Why should this be 12 volts? This is just a straight switch. It's like a piece of wire. There's no voltage loss across it. Now, I come over here, I come to this connector. How much should it be after this connector? 12 volts, why? I have no voltage loss. I didn't lose any voltage, it's a straight wire. Now we come to these two. And if you remember yesterday, I talked about series and I talked about parallel. What are these two in relation to, the, to each other? They are in parallel. This one is across this one. Why do we have to put them in parallel? Well, for the easy, easy theory, if we put them in series, like I put them over here, if one burns out, the other one will have no current going through it. So if you lose one lamp, you lose both. When you have this, look at the paths. This is coming something called a splice. So you have two wires coming out of the splice, one here and one here. If this one is burned out, can current still flow? Yes, current still has a path to flow in this one. If this one is burned out, can current still flow? Yes, current still has a path over here. This is why we put them in parallel. But also, since they are in parallel, that means the voltage is the same across them. You see, it doesn't make a difference if I have resistors in parallel, capacitors in parallel, or reverse lights in parallel, or parking lamps in parallel, whatever. Everything is in parallel. The parking lamps, the headlamps, you'll notice that. they all. So remember this configuration. If you understand this, you'll understand lighting systems, regardless. So how much should I have here at the splice? 12 volts, uh, just a single wire. Let's go down this path. Again, going through a connector. How much should I have here? 12 volts. Why? It's a simple wire. And then current flows here, here. See the... the the arrows here and where does it go it has to go back to the battery that means after it goes over here it has to find the ground somewhere go here through this black wire actually through the splice another connector through the black wire another splice another connector another splice right here to g200 which is the ground now let's look at this path Current flow has another path to flow. It's like you're driving and you have Interstate 90, Interstate 80. Which one should I take? Well, if you have two paths, right, you take this path or this path, right? So now we're going to go this way, this way, this way, through this connector, C301, through the splice, through another connector, through another splice, let me try to focus it. Do another splice. Same splice as this one, right? The same connector as this one. Same splice as this one. And same ground as this one. They both have the same ground. Same splice. Same connector. Up to here. Everything from here to here is shared. Keep that in mind if you have a problem. How much should I have here? 12 volts. It's just a piece of wire. How much should I have here? 12 volts. Now, I want to point out a couple of things before we start troubleshooting. The orange is where, the where I put the troubleshooting measurements. The blue is where it should be, how it should be when it's normally functioning correctly. If you look at this diagram, you see, a, you see something that's really, really, I guess, helpful or informative. When I first started out, I said, okay, and the reason why I said that, and, you, and you'll see why, purple, orange, purple, orange. Over here I said, uh, black, uh, what did I say, black, 
black, pink. Look at this one over here, black. If you notice in this diagram, it, it shows you that the, uh, there are two colors here by the wiring. See the wire? It shows you it is a striped wire with two colors. 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 Until, guess what we get to? This one. After the lamps, it is one color, one wire with one solid color. This is black. This is black. This is black. This is not. And you see the stripe? That shows you there are two colors and a stripe. I haven't seen too many of these type of schematic, but wow, this is a great type of schematic to use because right away when I see this, boom, there's two colors. When I see this, there's only one color. Beautiful. And it's the same thing obviously over here. See this? Two colors. See the stripe? Two colors, two colors, two colors. Two colors, one color. That's it. Now, the other thing is, usually with makes and models, usually they, they try to stay with the same color wires, same uh, um, ID numbers for connectors and things like that. If you know one, you know many. So if we come over here, let's say, we come over here. If you notice over here, we come to this uh, connector, C118, uh, I believe. The same one will be over here, Rem regardless if it's Bronco Regardless if it's Ranger, it's the same, and they try to keep the same color wire. So see, see over here, black, pink, blank, pink, same connector, same numeral, oh, ID, no, ID. Okay, now we come over here also, black, pink, black, pink. They try to keep it the same. And if when you come over here, let's see if I can get it. Splice, the splice, S335, S335. They try to keep it the same numbers, the same color wires. <clears throat> Over here, black, black. Over here, black, black. See? Now, also, let's see if I can get it. Uh... And also, see, G200, G200, same ground points. So they try to keep the same thing going. So if you, basically, let's say if I want to go to a green wire, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm troubleshooting, and I want to find for the Bronco, right? I want to find the connector, and I want to find this. Uh, which wire is it? The black and pink. Now I'm working on a Ranger. Which color is it? Black and pink. So I'm going to look for 12 volts here. I'm going to look for 12 volts here. So they try to keep it the same thing so you know what's going on. So if you know one make and model, you'll know pretty much another make and model with the color wires. Also, the same thing with the grounds and sometimes the connectors and the splices. Okay, now I hope you understand that. So we have to have this, the backup switch. Now, only th one thing I always want to point out is looking at schematic and troubleshooting are two different things. Getting access to a component can take a half hour or more to get to that to that component to troubleshoot it, to find it. So we have to what's convenient for us to go? The most convenient is to go under the hood and just go over here for the fuse panel. To go and take these two out, these two lights and say, you know what, these two lights are out. That must mean maybe the switch is not good or the fuse is not good. That's good. I agree with you. However, we have to think of one thing. Is it easy to get to these two lights? It's not easy to get to take out the fixture for each one. Try to get the light. We have to, we have to get the right screwdriver or the right tool. That might be a, a, a half hour. Then you have a customer in the waiting room saying, why is it taking so long for my vehicle to be troubleshooted when it's only, you know, only the reverse lights are out? right so you have you have pressure from everywhere from your boss from the customer not easy so this is first of all why would i even go over here to the light take go to the connector and measure 12 volts if i have 12 volts over here that means that all this is good right something tells me that 12 volts is not here 12 volts is not here so this must be zero volts the orange is the troubleshooting 
this must be zero volts. So it must be something common to both. Let's troubleshoot. And then you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. So let's say the, first, the easiest access that I have was the fuse. Of course, I go to one side of the fuse, then I go to the other side. I measure 12 volts here, and I measure 12 volts over here. This is the troubleshooting guide. Doesn't matter which side is connected to which when I measure the fuse. Doesn't, measure, doesn't matter if I measured first this side or I actually measured first this side. Because when you look at the fuse inside, you don't know which is connected to B+. Plus. You don't know which is connected to the purple-orange wire. doesn't really matter because you know what? As long as I get 12 volts across each. If I come to one side and it measures 12 volts and the other side measures zero, I know that fuse is open, regardless of anything. If I go to one side and let's say the supply, the battery, the cable is, is not making contact or it's broken, I'll get zero volts here, zero volts at the other side. That means I'm not connected at all to the battery. Now, so we confirm one thing. I have 12 volts over here. The fuse is good. Now, to get to this is also not easy. I have to, might, might have to take off a battery, might have to take off the air in, intake chamber. It's a lot of work also. And for me to go and say, you know what? Oh boy, you know what? It wasn't the backup switch at all after, after I just disassembled everything. It wasn't even that. So where can I go for a point of attack if I can find a spot? Remember, this is the easiest place to get access to. We did this. We accomplished this. We know this is good. Do we know this is good? Well, this is common to both. This will, if this is not good, it will knock out both lights. Great. But it takes a while to get to this to get access to this. This is where it's different in automotive. On a regular electronics PC board that I always tell people, the board is out, it's easy to get access to anywhere. Not automotive. This is a different type of animal. I cannot get to this without spending maybe a half hour, whatever it is, trying to figure out if it's taking the part out and saying, oh boy, this part is good after all. Now I'll have to take another half hour to put it back in and find out again, diagnose. That's why you have a schematic. Come over here and you say, okay, 12 volts over here. Let's look at the orange now, not the blue. Why do I have 12 volts? That means all this is good. This wire is intact. Then I'm going to come over here and say, okay, 12 volts over here, right? Where's a good point? I like this point, the splice. This is where they divide off. If anything is, if I get 12 volts over here, this is why I put the orange. If I get 12 volts over here, over here, what does that mean? That means this is good. That means all well, this is good. Therefore, I like this point over here to try to get to this point. If it's not too much of an inconvenience. That tells me this wire is good. If I get 12 volts over here. Then it'll bring me to, okay, what's common after this? Maybe this connector, maybe this splice, maybe this ground opened up. If I have 12 volts over here, that means it could be a ground. If you can get to this, if you cannot get to this point, I can take out the bulb, go to the connector, which is this connector, see if I have 12 volts over here. If I have 12 volts over here, guess what? That tells me all this is good, including the switch, including this wire. This is an important wire. If this breaks, this knocks out both. If I have 12 volts over here, when I take out the connector, right, that means all this is good. I don't even have to measure the other one. Because... 12 volts over here tells me that for sure I'm connected to the battery through the switch and through the fuse. That's it. In one shot, everything is good. Where, where else could be the problem? Can't be over here. Has to be over here or here to ground. That's why I put the orange over here. Concentrate on this. So the easy thing is to do to go to the fuse. Fine, I agree with you. Do the simple things fuse and also 
remember access points. What's easy to get to, what's easy not to get to. If you take something out and it's not the problem, you have to have time to put it back in and diagnose again. That customer will not be waiting that long for that if you charge a labor rate of $100, $120 an hour, believe me. So this is how we approach it. I like to take this one out, measure this 12 volts. If I have 12 volts at the connector, it's an easy point. Yeah, it's going to take me some time to take the fixture out, get the proper tool, and take the connector. That's right. But the fact that I measure 12 volts tells me that this lamp is good. And then I concentrate from here to here. If you want to leave this connector in here, in the circuit, then you need a back probe to put it in and see how much measurement you, you measure. But for, for all purposes, let's say I can take out the connector, break it off, take it out, detach it as they say, measure 12 on this one, or I can take this one out and measure 12 volts. 12 volts tells me this is good. If I took this out and I measure 12 volts over here, this wire might be broken. So I come to the splice and say, I measure zero volts over here. I measure zero, zero, Why? The only thing that's common to both is here to here. This wire might be broken. If it's not this, it could be this. This is common to both. Remember, what is common to both? This is common to both. 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 Anything here will knock out both. You're dealing with two problems, not one. If it's just one is out, of course you go for the, for the, for the bulb. Again, one more time, because somebody asked me a question. If I, go to the, if I take this one out, this connector, C314, I measure 12 volts. I don't even have to measure 12 volts over here because I know all this is good. And the problem has to be common to this. Okay, I hope you understood that. Thanks for the subscribers. Um, the subscribers are going up. I think this is the only channel I know, I think, where I have more subscribers than views, than views for each video. Amazing. Well, it is what it is, right? Let's continue on. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Go over it as much as you can to pause it. It's a confusing. It's a real easy schematic, but you know what? It's confusing how to troubleshoot it because you have to remember... Which, what do I have access to and what will take me a long time to get access to? That's the challenge of automotive. Easy to get to this. Easier to get to this. Not so easy to get to this. That's why I put this as number one priority. This is easy to get to. To take this out is easy. To take this might be a challenge. Okay, thanks for watching.